Our scripture reading this morning comes to us from the gospel according to Luke, the 10th chapter, beginning with the first verse. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them on ahead of him, two by two, into every town and place where he himself was about to go. And he said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I am sending you out as lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no money bag, no knapsack, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace be to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest upon him. But if not, it will return to you. And remain in the same house, eating and drinking what they provide. For the laborer deserves his wages. Do not go from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and they receive you, eat what is set before you. Heal the sick in it and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not receive you, go into its streets and say, even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, the kingdom of God has come near. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts upon the scripture be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. If at first you don't succeed, quit, 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 right? Of course not. That's not the way the the proverb goes. You and I both know that what the proverb actually says is this. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Of course, there are some children out in Champlain, Illinois, who might beg to differ. A number of years ago, their teacher gave them a list of unfinished proverbs. She then asked them to finish the proverbs by filling in the blanks. Some of their finished proverbs were interesting, to say the least. For example, did you know that you should never bite the hand that looks dirty? (laughs) Here are a few more. It's better to be safe than punch a fifth grader. If you lie down with dogs, you'll stink in the morning. (laughs) A penny saved isn't much. Never underestimate the power of termites. And if at first you don't succeed, quit, quit, quit. That last one actually comes from Jesus, believe it or not. It's true. It's there. You can see it in the instructions that he gave to his followers before he sent them out to prepare the way for him. Jesus gave them all kinds of pithy advice. He told them to travel light and to always eat their vegetables. He told them to not go from house to house looking for a better invitation. And if somebody refused to welcome them, his advice was simple. He said, just shake off the dust from your feet and move on to the next village. If at first you don't succeed, quit, quit, quit. Now I will admit that Advice like that doesn't play very well in our success-driven society. These days, you're never supposed to give up because no one likes a quitter. That's why you have to admire the boy who was playing baseball one day with a few of his friends. The boy was standing in the outfield when an elderly man walked by and asked, What's the score? 27 to nothing, the boy replied, we're losing. The man shook his head. That must be very discouraging, he said. The boy shook his head. Nope, he said, I'm not discouraged at all. Really, the elderly man said, why not? 
because uh, the boy uh, said, we haven't had our turn to bat yet. It's still the top of the first inning. (laughs) If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. That's the way it's supposed to work in our success-driven society. Just ask Elizabeth Brinton. She did something that no one else had ever done before her. What she did was really amazing, especially when you consider the fact that she was only 13 years old when she did it. So what did Elizabeth Brinton do when she was 13 years old? Believe it or not, she went out and sold 11,200 boxes of Girl Scout cookies. When someone asked her how she was able to sell so many boxes of Girl Scout cookies, she said it was simple. You just have to be able to look people in the eyes and make them feel guilty. (laughs) If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. That's the way it's supposed to work in our society. But Jesus will tell you that sometimes the best thing you can do is be a cheerful quitter. Sometimes the thing that you need to do is shake the dust off your sandals and move on. It's what you have to do sometimes with a relationship that's going nowhere. It's what you have to do sometimes when someone refuses to listen to you. It's what you have to do sometimes with a dream that just isn't going to happen. Instead of banging your head against the wall and getting angry, the Lord wants you to be a cheerful quitter and move on. That's what Jesus told his disciples to do when someone refused to receive them. And maybe, just maybe, he's telling you to do the same thing right now. Shake the dust off your feet and move on. Now I will admit that it isn't always easy to do that. After all, the last thing you want is to feel like you're a failure. The reality, though, is that you're not going to find the kingdom of heaven in that unhealthy relationship. You're not going to find the kingdom of heaven in that person who refuses to listen to you. You're not going to find the kingdom of heaven in that dream that just isn't going to happen. The kingdom of heaven is waiting for you somewhere down the road. It was waiting for the disciples in the next village, and it may be waiting for you in a new relationship. It may be waiting for you in a new job or a new challenge or a new dream. When you're a cheerful quitter, you understand that not everyone's going to love you, and that's okay. When you're a cheerful quitter, you're going to understand that not everyone is going to listen to you. And when that happens, it doesn't mean that you're a failure as a parent or a friend. When you're a cheerful quitter, you understand that sometimes the smartest thing you can do is let go of a dream that wasn't what God wanted for you anyway. If at first you don't succeed, quit, quit, quit. Shake the dust off your shoes and move on. That, by the way, is what you have to do sometimes when it comes to the realities of getting older. Over the years in visiting nursing homes and shut-ins and uh, people who are ill and can't do things that they once were able to do, I've learned that the secret to aging gracefully is knowing when to try, try again and when the time has come to quit, quit, quit. I saw that for myself a number of years ago when I went on a ski retreat with our senior high youth ministry. At first, I tried my best to keep up with them as they went zipping down the mountain. I quickly discovered, though, that I didn't have the stamina that I had when I was younger. I quickly discovered that my reflexes weren't what they used to be. And then there was that little voice that popped into my head and whispered, 
You know, at your age, broken bones take a lot longer to heal. (laughs) So, I quit trying to compete with all of those young daredevils. And you know what? It was wonderful. Suddenly, instead of pushing myself to do something that I couldn't do any longer, I found myself cruising down the trails at a graceful speed that allowed me to enjoy the wonder of God's creation that was all around me. Suddenly, I saw the deep blue in the morning sky, and I saw the snow that was glistening in the trees all along the side of the trail. I felt the cold, crisp wind on my face. And life was good. Very good. All because instead of pushing myself to try, try again, I decided to quit, quit, quit. There's a story about an elderly woman who made the decision to quit trying to live all by herself in her home. After she made that decision, a woman who came to know her described her with these words. She is 92 years old, petite, well-poised, and proud. She is fully dressed every morning by 8 o'clock with her hair fashionably coiffed and her makeup perfectly applied. In spite of the fact that she is legally blind, Today, she has moved to a nursing home. Her husband of 70 years recently passed away, making this move necessary. After many hours of waiting patiently in the waiting room of the nursing home where I am employed, she smiled sweetly when told that her room was ready. As she maneuvered her walker to the elevator, I provided a visual description of her tiny room, including the eyelet curtains that had been hung in her window. I loved it, she exclaimed with all the enthusiasm of an eight-year-old child who had just been given a new puppy. Mrs. Jones, I said, wait a minute, you haven't even seen the room yet. Then she said those words that I will never forget. She replied gently, That does not have anything to do with it. Happiness is something you decide on ahead of time. Whether I like my room or not does not depend on how the furniture is organized. It's how I organize my mind. I've already decided to love it. It is a decision I make every morning when I wake up. I have a choice. I can spend the day in bed recounting the difficulty I have with the parts of my body that no longer work. Or I can get out of bed and be thankful for the ones that do work. Each day is a gift. And as long as my eyes open, I will focus on the new day and all of the happy memories I have stored away just for this time of my life. Old age is like a bank account. You withdraw from it what you've already put in. Sometimes the best thing you can do is be a cheerful quitter. You shake the dust off your feet and you move on. You do that knowing that the Lord is going to be there to lead you to the kingdom of heaven that is waiting for you somewhere down the road. Amen.